Hello Nature and Life, thank you for your comments about Jehovah's Memory. I'm going to use your comment to go ahead and, and, and show you a perspective of the Bible. And it's such a pleasure to talk to a person like you. Um, and I do have uh, really a weeping heart for, uh, especially for people that are still trapped in the Washtar Institution. Um, because I used to be there. Um, <clears throat> now, you quoted me Job chapter 14, 12 through 15. I'm going to read that real quick. I wish I had it spotted real quick, but let me do that real quick. There it is. All right. Um, we have to understand the setting. This is Job writing a, in, in his situation, which he's being crushed right now, uh, which right now he's completely under a lot of affliction. Um, God in the book of Job doesn't come to respond, I think, 40 chapters later when God shows up, actually. Uh, the beginning 40 chapters is about Job and his family, how they're just completely contemplating on where is God and what did jo Job do for all this stuff to happen. But I'm going to read it, 12 through 15. Uh, so man lies down and does not rise till the heavens are no more. Okay. Men will not awake or be aroused from their sleep. So if I look at just, if I isolate 12, then it tells me that we're eternally doomed. Like what the atheists believe, that there is no awakening. You see, you, we cannot isolate, but we have to understand, this was written when Job is in despair. It's a man's perspective upon him at his worst situation. Okay, David did that in the book of Psalms, and Solomon did that in the book of Ecclesiastes. But let, let me read, if only you would hide me in the grave. So he's kind of begging God, in verses 13, and conceal me till your anger has passed. And if you would set me a time and then remember me. You see? If God was going to function that way, set me a time. See, there's, it's a set me a time and then remember me. God doesn't fit there. It's, this is purely 100% carnal poetry that he wrote. Because God is not, first of all, trapped in time and his function. Okay? If God is going to use his memory, memory is based on time and function then God cannot be trapped with us in time warp, then He's not God Himself. God is a constant. Armageddon is here already according to God. Paradise is here already according to God. Creation is already here. Everything is constant. It's kind of hard for our, for our mind to kind of wrap around. But that's what it says. I mean, remember when Jesus said, You gave them to me before the beginning of the world, talking about the sheep. Wait a minute. See, that's kind of well-fitting with God's nature. It's constant. In God, we are already there. Things are already... It's a constant thing. I think I've said enough for that. But, let's go to... I'll give you the famous verse that the Watchtower quotes in regards to people when they die, they perish 100%. Soul, spirit, and body. That's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter uh, five, uh, chapter 9, verses 5. Okay? Let's look at that in comparison to the Job 4. Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verses 5, reads like this. This is also written when Solomon was in despair. Remember, at this point, Solomon, God has abandoned him because of all his deeds and his warnings. His, all his wives and pagan gods, they start coming in. He was, to please the wives, he was worshipping them. So God was completely jealous and he was very upset with Solomon. Okay? But this is how it reads. Ecclesiastes 9.5 For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward. Even the memory of them is forgotten. Notice? This is according to Solomon's input. Right? That the dead are gone 100%. Soul, spirit, and body. This is what the Watchword teaches based on that verse right there. But if you flip one page over, even in New World Translation, flip one page over to 12.7, Ecclesiastes 12.7, okay? In 12.7, how does it read? It reads like this, and the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. Wait a minute, the same guy says there is a separation. See, the clay part of Adam stays where it came from, where it was formed from, and then the breath of spirit that came from God in the book of Genesis, you remember? It goes back to God. 
So in other words, wait a minute. Why would God want to remember me if my spirit is back with God? It's already right there in His company. How does that work? You see, all, are these scriptures contradicting themselves? No, they're not. You have to look at the writer's perspective and position. What position is he in when he writes this? Now let's look at the book of Thessalonians. Uh, 1 Thessalonians, of course. 1 Thessalonians tells us exactly what happens to a believer, the one that dies in Christ, the one that's redeemed in Christ, the one that's redeemed already in Christ. What happens to him? Let's look at the 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm going to start verses 13. This is Paul writing to the church of Thessalonica. Brother, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep, meaning the ones that died. The ones that died are the ones that believed in Jesus Christ, and he's talking to the ones that are walking around, but believers in Christ. What is he saying to them? Or to grieve like the rest of men. He's telling them, don't be in despair about the ones that believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that they died. Why are you in despair? Why? What does he say to them? You have, you act, okay, like, or to grieve like the rest of men. Who are the rest of men? The non-believers, the pagans, the carnal people. You act like them, he said. The believers that died, he's telling them, don't we have hope? Where's our hope? Verses, uh, verses 14. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. That's our belief. The resurrection, you remember? For our stamp approval. We believe in the resurrection. That's what core Christianity is. Okay? And so we believe that God will bring with, with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. So the ones that you're worried about, that passed already, that were in Jesus, what does Paul say? They're gonna, God will bring them back with Jesus. Wait a minute. Jesus can't rise twice. He already did that 2,000 years ago. And this was written way after the resurrection. Paul wrote this after the resurrection. But he's saying you quit worrying right now, the ones you're walking, the ones that fell asleep, that were true believers in Christ. The ones that fell asleep, they are coming back with him. God is bringing them. So wait a minute. If it's going to be based on Jehovah's memory, what, where are these people? Who are, who's he talking about? Let's go to verses, uh, I think, second half of 15. Who are left till the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Okay, watch what happens. I'm going to read 15 again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we, we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. You see? In the Wasar Institution, the ones that are walking, let's, let's, let's picture this. If Armageddon just came down right now, the ones that are walking around, they actually think they are ahead of the ones that died. That they're still, they're watching Jesus come. That's what they think. No. Paul says the ones that fell asleep in Jesus Christ are coming back with him. So they got us beat. See, according to the kingdom, they got us beat. They're already with him. So don't think you're going to precede them. You get it? You're beat. They're already there. They're going to come back. That's what the hope of resurrection is. Is that they're already with Christ. So what do you say about this verse right here? How, how would you explain it? If you, were, if you were to watch our institution. See, I, I don't want to say Jehovah's Witness, but, 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 but how would Watchtower explain that? See, but they go and, and, and rely their verses and for their doctrine upon men that are in despair and that are thinking carnally. You get it? I mean, they use Ecclesiastes 9.5, but then if you go to Ecclesiastes 12.7, the same book, one page over, it says otherwise what the Watchtower teaches. But I look forward to, to interacting with you, and, and God bless. Thank you.